Good evening, and welcome to our new season of programming. Last summer, the Inuvialuit Communication Society had a chance to visit Holman, one of our six communities in the Inuvialuit Settlement Region. While we were there, we talked to a very busy lady who played a big part in completing a book that an author wrote. Also, she helps and coordinates programs and events in her community of Holman. Next, we stop in on the 1997 Billy Jaws Open, which is an annual nine-hole golf tournament that brings celebrities and locals to the most northerly golf course in the world. For Tomopta, I'm Lawrence Rogers. In July of 1997, we traveled from Inuvik to Tuktoyaktuk to take some people that were taking part in a 10th annual golf tournament in Holman. The flight to Tuk took about half an hour. After taking on the passengers, we resumed the trip to Holman. Arriving in Holman, we were greeted by residents of the community with handshakes and hugs, renewing old friendships and gaining new ones. Inuinaktun and English are the languages of the basically Inuvialuit population of the hamlet, which numbers at about 450 people that are permanent residents living here. The picturesque community of Holman, or Olohaktok as the people like to call it, is situated on the central west coast of Victoria Island. Julia Orena, a resident of the hamlet, explains more on how the community came to be. Well, there, there was a lot of Hudson Bay postings along the coast, but it's the same buildings. They just kept moving mm -hmm. because they didn't know about Inuit culture and how they resided in different areas for different seasons. And then they figured this area was a central place from being in Prince Albert Sound and down to Minto Inlet. So when people are passing through to each, either Prince Albert Sound or to Minto Inlet, this was the central place. Mm -hmm. And then that's where the Roman Catholic and the Hudson Bay Post and Anglican um, missionaries resided in first around Mashuyak area, then over to the King's Bay, then to the present site where mm -hmm. the community is. Can you tell me your name and your title? I'm Julia Orena. I was born here in Holman, and I work as a community health representative. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, where you were born and where yeah. you were raised? I was born here in Holman at the old town site which is right across in Kings Bay. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was raised. And during that time, we moved over, or after my birth, we moved over to the present site here. And mm -hmm. this is where I grew up, in and around the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. um, this interview is, is based on um, how you helped an author write a book. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me how it came about and the name of the book? Well, the name of the book, it varied 
through the whole process how we started the interviews off and we first titled it um, the history of Ulukak mm -hmm. and going through the process of getting it published we had to work with the publishers so it changed from the earlier title to the Northern Copper Inuit mm -hmm. and how I got started in that, I guess, with my job, I'm quite curious as to who's in town from the outside, outside of home and, and how they're getting involved with the community. And I just started asking questions and I got interested and in wanting to know, know more about the elders and their past and being out on the land and how they survived and that's how I continued working with the author. Mm -hmm. um, how long did it take and uh, how was your involvement in writing the book? Well, it took longer than we had planned. Um, I'm not exactly sure what year we started, but because I was working here at the health center and also doing interviews in the evening mm -hmm. and also working at the hamlet, uh, we had an office space at the hamlet, and from there we ran short of uh, some funding, so we had to keep asking for funding to continue this work on because we were paying the uh, elders for their interview, plus I was being paid to work afterwards. Mm -hmm. So um, it took us quite a while, and it finally be published May 96. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, uh, about the author, Richard Condon? He was well liked by the community and he got along with everybody. He got to know people for who they are and he was interested in the community and as to what people how they lived on the land and how they moved to the community. Very interested. And it was pretty sad to hear that uh, he died in Russia doing the same work or starting to do the same work. Um, how did you get to know him? I mean, how did you? Like I had said a little earlier, mm -hmm. Like, I'm always interested in people that come into the community and make a point of either saying hi and asking how they're doing or what are they doing here and for how long. And that's how I got to know him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. And also with his um, involvement with other work he had done before with Inuit youth, he also had interviewed youth from my age group and younger and maybe a few older than I, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But um, he also collected all that information for a book called The In With You. Okay, uh, where was he from? Arkansas, Arkansas. in the States. Mm -hmm. um, do you know why he chose Holman? Why he chose, chose Holman as a subject? I'm not sure why he chose it initially, but I think he had done two other books before he did this book, mm -hmm. before we worked on this book, The Northern Copper Inuit. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not sure. I haven't seen the first book because it's out of print. I haven't seen a copy of it, but that's one book I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the initial writing of, of the, some of the... Uh, interviews and stuff like that. Um, what other kinds of research was done? Um, well, there was two parts really where he did all the initial research of getting information from archives, museums, explorers from that were involved with this community. Mm -hmm. And not only explorers, but people that whale through here, did some whaling and trapping through here mm -hmm. that do reside in the north. So we had to do, a, he had to do a lot of 
writing letters and phone calls asking for pictures that we could use or any written information they might have had mm -hmm. and left behind in the museums or I archives mm -hmm. to use that as part of the information process. Mm -hmm. And the second part was that we interview the elders in the community just to see if the information that we have is that relevant, was that true, because a lot of the elders that we interview remember some of these people that we got the information from. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, can you remember some of the names of the elders that were, that were interviewed for, uh, um, for, for the information to use in your book? There's Albert Balvik who's passed away, Agnes Nereya, who's passed away, um, Flasi Papikluk, who's also passed away, um, Sam and Rini Ulikdok, my grandparents, Ruth Nereuna, Frank Kuptana, Isa Ilgayak, Memorana and his wife, Nanugak. There's quite a few elders mm -hmm. that we interviewed. And also some younger people mm -hmm. that have gone gone on to see the changes and how with the um, modernization of the community. From Wulukwakto, you're watching Television Northern Canada. Welcome to the 1997 Billy Jaws Open to Golf Tournament. Have fun. In 1997, the tournament will be in its 10th year. Tony Kobiski, the recreation coordinator from 1987 to 1990, decided that a celebrity golf tournament would be a huge success in the community, and so he promoted it. Jerry Bristow, mayor of Holman, explains. So, uh, there's three or four of us that are involved in basically the design of the course and setting up a lot of the work. I volunteered a lot of my time to help build the greens and stuff on this course. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we had our own little local tournaments, and then uh, our recreation coordinator at the time, uh, Tony Kolbiski, thought it would be nice if we brought some uh, uh, golf course pros in to maybe help teach a little bit and, uh, and have a little tournament. respect to Billy Joss, who was a former Hudson Bay Company manager, and, and he, he was an avid golfer. We decided to, to name the tournament after him. Mm -hmm. It progressed from a three-hole course in the early 80s to our present nine holes. I think we're out here just to have fun. Okay, my name is Louis Martin, and uh, I'm the Recreation Director in Holman. And uh, how do you go about um, um, putting uh, a tournament such as this on? Well, this has been uh, an annual event, so uh, the basic stuff is just setting the dates up like uh, about a year in advance, trying to get uh, people, people around that uh, know what date the tournament's going to be. And uh, after that, it's just working volunteers and trying to coordinate everything. Uh -huh. We've got uh, three rounds of uh, with our nine-hole golf course, and every night we have a lounge at the uh, community hall. We have to have some cooks and uh, some volunteers out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you saw them, but there's some cooks out there just cooking away all weekend. So mm -hmm. it's all volunteer work, and uh, I'm just working with all the volunteers trying mm -hmm. to coordinate them. Uh, Billy Joss, the name Billy Joss uh, is, is synonym, synonymical with uh, Holman Island. Um, why did they um, name it the Billy Joss Open? What well, reasons is this? I believe uh, what I heard is Billy Joss was a uh, northern store manager, and uh, he is the first one that introduced golf clubs to the community of Holman, so they uh, found it appropriate to name the tournament after him. Mm -hmm. They made it into a pretty big tournament. This year is one of the record years for the number of participants. We have 51 golfers this year registered, so it's a, uh, it's from a big year. From what different communities? Uh... We have people from Kogluktok, 
uh, talk to Yoktok, Inuvik, uh, Kogloktok, Yellowknife, Edmonton. Along with a regular nine hole golf tournament, there are some little ones going on as well, such as the chipping competition. This is where the player sets up a number of yards off the green and tries to make it in the cup or gets it as close to the hole as possible. is Peter Okina. Jane Okina. And then Robert Joss. Joss and then Betty. These are the winners as announced by one of the organizers. We're going to the chipping competition. We have for the men, Mark Hikuta. Before starting the long drive contest, the organizers measured the course and wooden stakes were pounded into the ground at 100 yard intervals. You can line me up with that one. Me? Okay, yeah. Then you get out there. And then the competition was on.
much ground. Putting is a very important part of the game of golf. The putting competition was in three categories, men's, ladies, and children's. Players putted from the edge of the green, and whoever made it in the cup or got the closest to it was the best putter. After Gary, we'll, we'll have Larry, Polippi. Okay, Mr. Mayor, let's put it right on the right where it should be. <laughs> the Billy Jaws Open has had a lot of celebrities attend the tourney since it opened in the late 80s. But one that keeps coming back is Dr. Randy Gregg of Edmonton. Well, first of all, it's a, it's a great community here in Holman. That's a good event. I think uh, events in the Northwest Territories like this are excellent to build the spirit of the community and to allow the young children to see uh, people from the south and people from other areas in the, in the Arctic and uh, understand a little bit more about what it's like to be part of a community okay, and build on that. So really just a great event and, and uh, I'm happy to come out whenever it's, it's possible. You came out uh, here with your two sons this time. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Well, when you do a number of charitable events a year, many times it means you have to leave your family at home. So uh, luckily with the help of Aeroplan and uh, the tickets we can get through that, uh, to bring the boys up is just an extra special time. It means uh, it's a lot easier to justify coming up and any time we can come up and see old friends and try to help out the tournament, we sure try. Louis Martin, the current recreation director of Holman and Mayor Bristol tells of some other celebrities that have come to the Billy Joss Open. Well, Randy Gregg is one of the main celebrities that is coming every year, so uh, he's one of the one of the locals for the tournament. Uh, last year we had Martin Jelena. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't make it again this year. This year we have John Barry. He's a TV producer from Edmonton. Uh, we had Gordon Stikey from ITV. Um, I've got a list of about 25 names. Mm -hmm. Kathy Gregg, she's an Olympic speed skater. So we've got, there's quite a bit of celebrities that came for this tournament, and uh, it's a pretty big event in the community and also across the territory. Last year we had uh, Mark Magellana. Previous to that, we had Perry Sokowski from ITV News and uh, other, other, we had a few, Charlie Huddy, trying to think of all the people that have been up, Jeff Bukaboo. We've had a lot, I and mean, they've all been wonderful, uh, uh, community-orientated people. That, in, I think they all thoroughly enjoyed their experience up here. Mm -hmm. In the regular nine holes of golf, 
The winners were announced by Louis Martin, and the trophies were handed out by Randy Gregg. Now we're going to start the presentation for the BJO uh, Juniors category. And we'll have Randy Gregg do the presentations. Randy, his camera uh, lens is breaking because he's uh, looking at you. For the juniors category, third position, Charlie Egotek Jr. Second place, Sean Klegenberg. That joined us from Kovlokto. And for first place, Roland Natena. During the three-day tournament, a good variety of food and beverages were being prepared on outside barbecues right on the site. So no one had to be hungry while playing golf on the shores of the Beaufort Sea. It looks good, eh? <laughs> Don't burn me, okay? I've been trying to get some of the fresh fried meat for a little bit. Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our program this evening. Later on this season, we'll be showing you more programs out of the community of Olokokto, such as the King Lake Jamboree and the Kiribati Northern Games. Before leaving you this evening, a special thanks to everyone for an enjoyable stay in your community, especially Louie and Annie for taking such good care of me during my time there. Thanks again for watching. Good night. <laughs>